this tutorial, we are going to explore how we could actually create some kinetic typography using simple type and After Effects. We are going to use different effects and techniques in order to make our typography look three-dimensional, add its emotion, and make it even more engaging. We are going to start by creating a new composition on our file and call it Part 1. I'm going to keep the classic dimensions 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to go ahead and press OK. 10 seconds uh, duration is enough for this little experimentation. The first thing that I'm going to need is to bring in my type. So I'm going to use the type tool to type in the word hello. And I'm going to keep the font the Suzy International Black, which is one of my favorite ones. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this word a few times so I can actually use it as a texture to apply it to a 3D shape, which is going to be a cylinder in this case. So I'm going to right click in order to align um, my anchor point to the center of the layer and then once again in order to center the object in view. I'm going to rotate it using the shortcut of the W letter and scale it up to cover the full space of the composition. If I'm going to go to the effects and type in cylinder, I can just drag and drop the perspective CC cylinder effect either to the layer on the layers panel here or on my composition itself at the object that I wanted to, which is in this case my typography. On the rotation part, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my cylinder in order to have it horizontal parallel to my canvas. I'm going to use also the rotation X in order to get some interesting perspective. You can use the radius in order to increase and decrease the uh, radius of the cylinder and further adjust it. That feels already quite interesting. We have the perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and animate the Y axis. So I'm going to put a keyframe, which you can see if you press the U letter on your keyboard at the beginning and another one at the end of my timeline, having a circle of number one. So if I'm going to press the spacebar, you see how it actually rolls around itself, which is an interesting graphic. So I'm going to save my file. It's quite important to save your file just in case that something crashes and so on. What I'm going to do now is separate the front side with the back side of the cylinder so I can have full control of the lighting on them. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the render to outside. I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to switch the bottom one to the inside. So this way I have two layers with the two different parts of the cylinder. I'm going to grab the top one and go to the light in order to adjust my lighting. So I probably need it from the right side, so from somewhere here, so it's nice and bright. And I'm going to increase also the intensity of the light. And I'm going to go ahead and add another layer between them, a shape layer, which I'm going to create a rectangle in grayish tones. And then I'm going to apply a blending mode to it, something like Stencil Luna, which is going to color the back um, side of the cylinder even darker. So you can see the difference by turning it on and off. And that helps a lot in order to make the typography a bit more readable. And yeah, here we go. So the first graphic is already done. So let's go ahead and move to part two. On this part, we are going to create a new composition and try another experimentation. We are going to use exactly the same um, format for our file. Press OK. And we are going to start again by bringing in subtypography. I'm going to type again hello, but in this case here, I'm going to keep the same font and the same weight for it. But in this time, I'm not going to 
duplicated just vertically, but I'm going to create three clones horizontally and few lines vertically. So we need a kind of a rectangle long landscape um, graphic instead of the previous one. So something like this can work pretty well. I'm going to right click in order again to center the anchor point to the layer and you can also see the shortcuts if you want to use them and then center and view the whole composition, scale it up again to make it nice and big to cover the full space. So now we have our texture ready and the next step will be to create a cylinder again. So on the effects I still have my previous search of the cylinder, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my composition. I just want to see the outside, so the front part, so I'm gonna hide the other part. I'm gonna make it a bit wider, I think something like this works pretty well. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a composition of that. So I'm gonna pre compose this. Um, composition or actually let's firstly work a bit on the lighting so I think the direction was quite well just let's change a bit the brightness of it so something like this can be interesting or even the shading a bit so let's see the ambient so I think that works pretty well so I'm gonna right click to pre compose and call it part 2 and what I'm going to do next will be duplicating that part. I'm going to duplicate it so I can move it and position it on the left and duplicate it once again and position it on the right. And this is a really interesting composition and what I want to achieve is also some movement on that. So I'm going to double click to get within the composition of part two and apply some rotation. So again, I can quickly test it's the y-axis what we want to use. So I'm going to add the keyframe in the beginning of my timeline and I'm going to move the handle in the end and add another keyframe with one round. And you can quickly preview your cylinder rotating. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my composition and press the spacebar. So it feels like the one continues to the next one and so on. And that makes it like a nice continuous image. Something that we could work a bit farther could be the lighting, which I'm not 100% happy with yet. So perhaps the ambient is a bit too much. And the direction should be from one side. That creates a bit of extra contrast. And of course, you can play a bit farther and explore everything in detail before you export your file. So let's move forward to our third part, where we are gonna create a kind of a ribbon turning around itself. So a spiral could be described, something like that. So let's get started by creating a new composition. Again, the same settings as before and Starting with some type. So let's bring in again our word, which is just a hello. And I'm going to duplicate it this time just three times horizontally. I'm going to put the anchor point at the center. And I'm going to also center my object to the composition. I'm going to scale it up a bit. And I'm going to right click and then pre-compose, call it again part 3. And I'm going to get within this composition in order to scale down a bit the box so it perfectly fits our typography. So I'm going to press Command K, which is a shortcut in order to access the composition settings. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce the width just by, I think, 20. And the height, I think it should be around 250, so let's have a look. Or even less, so 230 or even 200 or even less, so 170. So it just needs a bit of play. And I think that's good. I'm going to create a new layer, a shape layer, and I'm going to color the rectangle that I'm going to create within it white. 
I'm gonna bring it right underneath my typography and color my typography block from the character panel and go back to the composition layer where you will see the updated graphic appearing. So I'm gonna access my effects and apply again the cylinder that we just learned. And I'm gonna increase a bit the size of the cylinder. So something like there perhaps, or yeah, so that's quite good. And then I'm gonna add another effect, uh, the transform one. So it's always quite easy to just type in what you are looking for. And the transform effect allows me to use this skew option, which is revealing a kind of a ribbon. So it's making your object being shifted in a way. In After Effect, it really matters also the order that you place the effects. So if I'm gonna grab the transform and place it just above the cylinder, you see that it actually creates a nice ribbon out of the graphic. And that is actually what I wanted to achieve. I'm gonna go ahead and scale up the word hello so I don't see the edges of this ribbon here. And what I want to do next is create some kind of animation on my ribbon. In order to do so, I will need to access on the cylinder the rotation again, and I'm gonna use the Y axis, which makes it feel like it's moving around itself. So again, I'm gonna go at the beginning and add a keyframe, take my pointer at the very end of the timeline, add the number one and the Y axis rotation, and job done. So if I'm gonna press play, you will see the little line wobbling around, so turning around itself. At this part, we are gonna explore how we can use the typography to turn it to a spherical 3D looking like composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition with our standard presets, press okay, and start with the typography. I'm gonna type in again the word hello. I'm gonna color it white so it's gonna be visible and just duplicate it so we have double the word in a horizontal way. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the word again a few times, so like five times or something. Center the anchor point to the content and center it as well to the view. Go ahead and scale up my typography so it covers the full space. I'm gonna select the whole composition and press enter and duplicate the typography. So I'm just gonna clone it here, even if you can't see that, and do that once again. So I have multiple lines now with my typography. And what I can do is zoom out in order to see like the red box, which includes all the word hello multiple times. And I'm gonna add a keyframe in the beginning with the position and a keyframe in the end with the new position that I'm gonna arrange. Firstly, I'm gonna reveal my rulers by pressing Command NR and bringing one here at the top of my typography. I'm gonna add another keyframe and I'm gonna drag this box at that part where the last hello is still at the bottom of the composition. And I'm gonna press play, just have a look. That feels good. And what I'm gonna do now is pre-compose this graphic here. So right click, pre-compose, and then call it part four. Now, what we need to do next is to apply this graphic on a sphere. So I'm gonna go on the effects panel, and type in sphere. I'm gonna drag and drop it to my composition and you see how immediately it applied my graphic on a sphere. What I need to do though is to adjust a few of the parameters of my sphere here in order to make it as engaging as possible. Firstly, let's have a look at the radius. So let's make it a nice and big sphere. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change the rotation so I can actually rotate it from a bit more interesting perspective. 
that feels already nice to see the top of the sphere and what is going on there. Change, perhaps that doesn't need to be changed, so let's work with the rotation Z. And that starts getting quite quite engaging. I just want to see the front, so I'm gonna put outside because I think it's getting quite confusing to see both the sides. So at this part here, I'm gonna also rotate it so I can see the full hello at the front. So something like this. A bit again, like playing a bit around with the perspective to try to figure out where is the nicest possible angle to see the sphere from. So something like this is getting there, I feel like. A bit up. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the light. So I'm gonna change the intensity to a higher one. And perhaps something like this in terms of direction or even the shading. Let's go with the ambient like in full. I don't really want the shade on that composition. I'm gonna go ahead and press the spacebar in order to see the animation, which is quite interesting to see all the hello moving towards the inside, but I think it would be more engaging the opposite. So I'm gonna revisit this words. I'm gonna press the U letter in order to reveal my keyframes and switch the order of them. And let's go back to our composition and see how it's looking like when you are starting from the center and going towards the outside of the circle instead of the opposite. And here we go. So I think like that works pretty well. So that's really interesting as an outcome. In this part, we are gonna start from the previous part where we created a sphere with the word hello, and we are gonna work a bit farther on the specific graphic. So let's explore a bit farther the sphere. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it in a different perspective so we just see the front of it. So I only need to adjust one of the axes, which is the X one. So minus 90, so I can see the very top of my shape. I'm going to go and select the invert option on my effects so I can make the typography the opposite color. I'm going to go within my composition here and create a new layer, a shape layer, and create a black rectangle, which I'm going to place just behind my typography. So when I'm gonna invert it in this case here, I will have a white, lovely background here. So what I'm gonna do next is turning the shape to a torus. And I'm gonna kind of fake it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, a shape layer, grab a circle, and draw it right in the middle of my shape. And right click to transform and align it to the center which we didn't align yet the anchor point, so it feels a bit off. So let's go ahead and do that again. Perfect. And that already feels like a torus. And if I'm gonna press play as well, you will see this lovely motion going on, like how the layers are going out. Perhaps in this case, I would prefer them the other way around. So I'm gonna access again the composition with the typography and swap the order of the keyframes of the position. And press play again. And yeah, I think it works pretty well when they are going towards the center. I'm gonna scale this a bit and make it smaller. And what I'm gonna do next is right click layer styles and add an outer glow. So I will need a glow in order to bring a kind of a gradient that will help me make it look more three dimensional. So I switch the color. And I'm going to also change the spread and the size so we can have it nice and big and visible there. And what we perhaps also need to change is the blend mode from screen to something like multiply. So now it's also visible. So the spread is a bit too much. We just need a tiny bit. So we can still leave the size a bit bigger. And you already see that it feels like it has some extra depth at the moment. 
and you can play around and adjust those parameters so it gets as realistic as possible. Another thing that they can do is duplicate the shape here and make it nice and big so it's the same with my torus. I'm gonna color it white instead and remove the layer style. So right click layer styles and then inner glow. I'm gonna change from the inner glow panel from yellow to black and press OK. And then I'm gonna switch also the size so I'm gonna make it way bigger. And of course I need to adjust again from screen to multiply in order to have the shade a bit more visible. What I need to also do is change the blending mode from normal to multiply in order to be able to see through. I'm gonna reduce a bit of the size of this inner glow, I feel like it's getting a bit too much. So something like 60 I think would be good. And I'm gonna do the same with the shape underneath and I'm gonna reduce it from 125 to just 100. And here you go, it already feels like a bit more of a three-dimensional shape. So if I'm gonna press play, you will be able to see this lovely motion of the torus and the typography rolling around it. We are going to go ahead and explore a new tool in After Effects, which is the effect of warp. I'm going to create a new composition again and start with my typography. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the word hello. And this time clone it just a few times in a horizontal axis. So one, two, and I'm going to scale it up and center it as we usually do. So transform, center anchor point, and then transform, center in view. And of course, we'll need to press Command K in order to adjust our composition. Or actually, I'm not going to adjust the composition. I'm going to pre-compose it and call it part 6. And then go ahead and adjust the composition of the typography itself. And I think we need something like 230. Let's have a look. Yes, that perfectly works. And I'm going to go ahead and select all the wording, press space, paste it, press space, and paste it. So I made six hello in a horizontal line instead of just two that we had in the beginning. I'm going to add a keyframe on the position part at the beginning and another keyframe at the end. And I'm going to use my rulers in order to grab the typography and scroll it on the side. Somewhere like there. Perfect. And let's have a look on what we created. Great. So it's a lovely line moving on the side. I'm going to go ahead and color my typography black and create a new shape layer which is going to be not a circle, so a rectangle, a white rectangle, which I'm going to bring behind my typography. And I'm going to switch back to the composition, the initial composition, in order to apply some effects. So I'm going to go to effects and select the warp. It's a lovely effect that allows you to distort your typography in multiple different ways. So you can see arc, lower, arc, or bulge and flag, wave and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and select the fish, which is a lovely distortion from a thicker to thinner part. Change the blend to a bit more intense, so something like 70. I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to select the flag option. And I'm going to drag it a bit farther down so the edge match the edge of the other layer. And I'm going to duplicate it once again, and I'm going to put minus 70 instead. So it takes the opposite direction, the wave. Bring it at the top, tile it up with the rest, and duplicate again the first layer, which I'm going to mark with the blue color so I can differentiate it. I'm going to paste it at the top and put minus 70 so we have the opposite distortion from the previous one 
place it at the top, duplicate it again to place it at the bottom, and create a little puzzle with the different distortions. I'm going to duplicate those two layers as well, so I'm going to bring them here at the very top, grab it and place it at the bottom to cover this little part here that is remained black. Make sure that you are working in detail. And I'm going to grab also that part to bring it at the top and cover that part there. And if you press play, you will be able to see the type moving lovely on the side and creating this little waves that make it look quite engaging, would say. In this part, we are going to start with the composition that we created on part 6. And we are going to go ahead and remove all of the parts except from one. We are going to start again by changing the effect from the effect control panel. Instead of the fish one, I'm going to go and select the rice. And that's just a different one that I feel like it's quite engaging. I'm going to make it minus and let's make it a bit like of a bigger wave. So something like 100. Place it at the bottom and duplicate it in order to get another wave that has the opposite direction. So plus 100. And tile them up together. And tile them up together. So they perfectly match the beginning of one with the beginning of the other. I'm going to grab both now and bring them a bit more centered. And I'm going to duplicate them. And drag them up. This way we have a kind of a thicker ribbon in a way. I'm going to go ahead and select the two that they have the same direction in the wave and mark them both, let's say, green. Now I'm going to make the other ones visible too, and I'm going to bring them behind. I'm going to select all of them and place them at the center of my composition and press play to preview what we created. So it feels quite interesting. One thing that I feel like we are still missing is the sense of depth. So I'm going to create a new layer, shape layer, which is going to have a gray tone. And I'm going to use it in order to create a shadow at the layer behind. So I'm going to use from the blending mode the option Stencil Luna, which is going to color the Hello ribbon, which is placed at the back of the composition. And if you press the spacebar, you'll be able to preview your graphic. Starting from part 7, I'm going to grab those lines and I'm going to move ahead by creating another graphic based on the warp effect. So I'm going to delete most of them and I'm just going to keep one of the stripes. I'm going to duplicate it and remove from the effect controllers the warp and place the line at the very top of my composition. Duplicate it again to place it at the very bottom. And work a bit farther on how I could use those stripes to create a nice engaging result. I'm gonna even like rotate it, perhaps one of them, so it feels like it's connecting the two stripes together. So I'm gonna play a bit with which one is gonna be the front and which one at the back. I feel like this should be at the very back. And since it's shifted, I'm gonna color it green so I can easily recognize it again. And I'm going to grab also this wobbly one and bring it at the very top so it's kind of the hero of the composition. So purple so we can actually see that. And what I'm going to do next is create a shape layer and add it so we can create some kind of tones and show the idea of depth in our composition. So stencil Luna, and I'm going to duplicate it and add another one, like somewhere like there, or even like I'm going to be brave and go at the very top. Make it a bit brighter. I feel like it's a bit too dark. And create some kind of depth by using the different shades of gray on the different 
rebuilds the different parts of this composition here. Just a tiny bit darker, perhaps that one. So you can play around till you get a nice balance. Another tool that I'm using quite often when it comes to kinetic typography is the mess work. So I'm going to create a new composition and I'm going to start with our classic typography. So type in the word hello. I'm going to multiply this word. So I'm going to make four clones and again, I'm going to adjust the anchor point to center it and center the composition and view. I'm going to scale it up to cover the full space and I'm going to pre-compose it by right clicking pre-compose and call it part 9. I'm going to go within this composition and adjust my canvas so it's a square canvas. And that feels quite good. Perhaps we need to add a tiny bit of extra width. So something like 200. Yes, 1200. That feels quite good. And I'm going to color it black. I'm going to create a new shape behind, which is going to be white for the background. And of course, I'm going to bring it underneath my type just by dragging and leaving the layer there. I'm going to go ahead and animate this layer. So I'm going to add a keyframe on the transform on the position and another one in the end where I'm going to drag the typography up so it goes outside the canvas. I'll need to duplicate it so it fills the full space here and leave it somewhere like there, would say. And yeah, we just have our typography moving towards up. I'm going to go back to the composition layer where you can see our type and I'm going to go ahead and apply the mess warp. So type in warp and you'll get the mess warp effect. So I'm going to reduce the rows to one and the columns two, and perhaps let's increase just the rows. You will see that you get some rows that allow you to just click on the edges, grab the anchor points and move them around in order to adjust the mesh. And that is really handy when you want to create your kind of fake 3D effect and have full control of how the surface is going to look like. And by applying this mesh wrap into a composition that allows you to animate what is within the mesh wrap without um, affecting the mesh itself. So something like this feels quite interesting. It feels like a page that comes at the bottom and it starts rolling and falling uh, down on the floor or something like that. So if I'm gonna press play, I will be able to see something like that. I feel like the direction is a bit wrong. So we need to go ahead and swap the position keyframes since we want it to roll towards the bottom, not uh, to have it rolling up. And if you press the spacebar, you get this lovely animation of a paper rolling. In this last part, we are going to explore how we could make our typography looking like a bit more liquid. So I'm going to create again a new composition and I'm going to start with our classic word, hello. I'm going to color it white so we can actually see that and just multiply it, I think three times could be enough. And what I'm gonna do is again, like adjusting my anchor at the center and center in view the typography itself. Scale it up and create a new composition out of it. So right click, pre-compose and then call it part 10. So I'm going to go to the effects panel and pick one of my favorite effects, which is the MR Mercury. So this effect allows you to create a kind of watery effect. So drops coming out and you see that the distortions are applied also to typography itself. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust some of the different 
properties that I can from this panel here. So change a bit the velocity and perhaps also the blow burst size. I feel like it's a bit too small, so I want to see more of this typography. So something like there, it feels pretty good. And the depth size as well, I'm gonna go ahead and increase it a bit. And press play to have a look on what we created. So it's a really simple effect which looks great it looks so nice like without really doing a lot of stuff but of course you can explore it more like define what it could be at the background how exactly you're gonna make these drops moving and so on and what i usually do is crop this very beginning of this effect so i can start straight away with this distortions and just leaving it to play around with this wobbly waves over the typography Hope you enjoyed those quick tutorials in After Effects and looking forward to see what you're gonna come up with, how you're gonna use the skills of kinetic typography and your imagination to create your very own graphics.